Hey guys, welcome back to Pop em Up Chem. In this video, we're carrying on with Unit 6 and we're going to look at reaction mechanisms, building on what we've already done on rate expressions and how we can use those to predict reaction mechanisms and steps for how reactions occur. First though, a little summary question for rate concentration and concentration time graphs, relating them to the order of reaction. Pause and take a moment to have a go at those. So with the rate concentration graph, we've got rate on the Y, concentration on the X, and the concentration time, we've got concentration Y time X. So it's for a second order reaction, rate concentration, we expect that upward curve. And for concentration time, we have the zero order reaction, which has a straight downward line and that decreasing half-life we discussed last lesson. So the first concept we're going to cover when we're looking at reaction mechanisms is the rate determining step. So the rate determining step arises when we have reactions that have multiple steps or processes in them. Now in these processes, each step has its own rate constant. However, when we look at the reaction as a whole, the rate constant for the slowest step is going to have the largest impact. And so that's what we use in our rate expression. We can think about this as a series of steps that approach a kind of bottleneck step. So if we have almost three lines running here along these nodes coming into one, it doesn't matter how fast going from the first to the second to the third dot is, it's quite clear that because the dot where they all come together and have to go through this one process in this kind of visual example, it's quite clear that this is going to slow the other processes down. This visual representation is really what's going on when we have a rate determining step. We can think of it as a bottleneck that all of the other information or in our case, chemical reactions have to go through. And because it's the slowest, it governs the overall rate. The nodes after this bottleneck can't magically produce more steps. They have to wait until the previous process is complete. And this helps us explain why not all of the reactants are going to be in the rate expression, because if a reactant is involved after this step, then it's not going to make a difference to the overall rate of reaction. So what's a reaction mechanism anyway? Well, if we take this reaction here, we can see that there are five moles of different substances in our reactants. So if we think about collision theory, that initially might suggest that we have five different particles all banging into each other at the same time. Well, if we think we've got to have the collision, the activation energy and the mutual orientation, that process is probably very unlikely. So when we see a reaction like this, what's more likely is that there is actually a multi-step reaction, a multi-step process that uses the sum total of this overall reaction, but each step is a little bit more simple. So when we use the term reaction mechanism, all we're referring to is a series of processes that taken all together give the whole reaction. So the rate determining step in this way functions to reduce the molecularity of the overall reaction. And when I say molecularity, I just mean the number of molecules that are required to bang into each other, that are required to collide to be able to allow the reaction to occur. We can say that if something only requires one molecule, i.e. it doesn't need a collision in the first place, that would be a unimolecular process. If there are two molecules involved, that would be a bimolecular process. And if there are three molecules, which is much less common, but still happens, that is a termolecular process. So how can these be expressed? Well, let's take the breakdown of ozone in both a one and two step process and have a look. So if we were to make this a one step process, then it must be equal to the overall reaction. So we would have two molecules of ozone would have to 
bang into each other, they would have to collide, and then in one step, they would all form three molecules of O2. This has an overall rate equation of rate equals K O3 to the power two, of course, because there are two molecules of ozone involved in the rate determining step. So this is a bimolecular process the way we've drawn it here. Now, if we have a two step reaction, we don't have to do that at all. We might have the first step being ozone breaking itself down in a unimolecular process into one oxygen and one O just by itself, an oxygen radical. Now we might say, well, there's no oxygen radical in that final equation, and that is correct. That means our second step would have to use up that oxygen radical. So we would take the oxygen radical and react it with another molecule of ozone, which then quite believably by the way it looks could form two molecules of oxygen just by themselves. Now we can see here if we take the overall of these two equations, if we add what's on the same side and subtract what's on opposite side of the equation, like the O radical, which means it's an intermediate, we get two O3 goes to three O2, which is the overall equation that we wanted. Now, what we have there is between step one and step two, we had an intermediate. So an intermediate is a species that's made in one step of a reaction and we can't isolate intermediates and then it is used in another step of the reaction. Okay, so these are very, very reactive, um, sometimes theoretical species that exist in between one step and another and they are instantly used up. And so they cannot appear in the overall rate equation or for that matter in the overall equation itself. So we can't know without knowing which of those two steps was slower the overall rate expression for the reaction with the mechanism I've drawn on the right, but that's not what we're looking at just here. All I'm trying to do is introduce us to a stepwise process to an overall reaction. We can, however, develop that understanding and use the rate determining step to identify the rate expression. So the first thing we need to do is identify the rate determining step. So for example, I've got a proposed mechanism here for this overall reaction of NO2 with CO. And once we know the rate determining step, we know that the rate equation is going to be rate equals K times the reactance of the rate determining step. So in this case, we've got two moles of NO2. So our rate expression is going to be rate equals K times NO2 concentration all squared because there's two moles of NO2 in the reactance of the rate determining step in this example. We can also think, okay, well, what if the rate determining step was the second equation? How would it differ? Well, we still follow the same process of using the rate as K times the reactance of the rate determining step. So initially we might think we have rate equals K times CO times NO3. However, NO3 does not appear in the overall reaction and is produced in step one and used in step two. So this is an intermediate. So this is not allowed in the rate equation. So we have to almost go on a hunt for the place that NO3 was made. And all we do is we look at the equation that produced this intermediate, and then we look at the reactance of that equation. So we need NO2 squared to be able to produce the intermediate. And so then we replace the reactants that can be in the rate expression with those from the first reaction. So the rate equation on the left indicates that changing the concentration of CO will not have an effect on the rate of reaction because it's obviously zero order with respect to CO. However, changing the concentration of NO2 will have an effect on the rate of reaction. Indeed, 
it will affect the initial rate of reaction by the change squared as its second order. On the right hand side, it indicates that changing either CO or NO2 will affect the rate of reaction. However, changing the concentration of NO2 will have a larger effect on the rate of reaction, obviously, because it's second order, so it will affect the rate of reaction by the change squared. So we can have a look at another one here. We've got the reaction of NO with oxygen. We, first of all, in the mechanism, are going to identify the rate determining step. And remember, the rate is going to be equal to K multiplied the reactants of the rate determining step, which would indicate K times oxygen multiplied by N2O2. However, if we look closely, we see that N2O2 is not in the overall equation. Indeed, it's an intermediate produced by the first step and used in the second step. So we need to go back to the first reaction and then use the reactants of the first reaction as the things that we include in the rate expression, which will give us the rate equation of rate equals K oxygen times NO2 squared. And that's because rate is affected by everything before and including the rate determining steps. So when the rate determining step is the second reaction, this is actually quite common. Remember that rate is not affected by anything that is after the rate determining step and so isn't included in the rate expression. Time for a couple of questions before we move on. First question, what is the overall reaction given the following mechanism? Pause the video and have a go. Pop them up. So for our overall equation, we're going to cancel things on opposite sides, the reactants and the products, and we're going to add things on the same side. So we're gonna have 2NO plus 2H2 goes to N2 plus 2H2O. And with the same mechanism, What's the overall rate expression? Pause the video. Pop them up. With these questions, we always have to find the rate determining step, which is the second one. So if we write an initial rate expression, we get rate equals K N2O2 times hydrogen. However, we see that N2O2 is produced by step one and used up in step two. So it's an intermediate. So we need to find what produces that intermediate. So we go back to the first reaction and we find that it takes two NO to produce the N2O2. So we get rate equals K times N2O2 squared times H2. So we can also have a go at predicting reaction mechanisms when we have access to the rate expression. So we know that the rate determining step determines the rate expression so that we know that everything that is in the rate expression must be involved in the reaction mechanism in the rate determining step or before the rate determining step. And don't forget the order of the reaction with respect to a reactant tells us how many molecules are involved in the rate determining step or before the rate determining step. And in that way, this can be a little creative. So let's have a look at this reaction. We've got the rate expression and we've got the overall reaction. So from the rate equation, we can see that CO will not be present in or before the rate determining step. And instead, two molecules of NO2 will be. So an example first step, if we made the first step slow, would be to do two molecules of NO2 produce something like NO and NO3. Now, that gives us our one molecule of NO that we require in our products, but it gives us this NO3, which isn't in the overall equation. So that's gonna be an intermediate that we would have to use up in a subsequent fast step. So we're going to do that and react it with the CO that we still need to include for the overall reaction. However, we've got too many molecules of NO2 on the left hand side. So one of our products is going to have to be NO2 so that we will cancel those two out to give us just one molecule of that. 
and then that leaves us of course with the CO2. Now if we add these together you'll see that if we cancel out what's on opposite sides so that's the NO2 and our intermediate we get NO2 plus CO goes to NO plus CO2 which is the same as the overall reaction and because the slow step has the two molecules of NO2 the rate equation would also match up. So we could say this is a valid proposal for a mechanism to this reaction. It doesn't mean it's true it just means that it's definitely a valid proposal. We would have to determine if it was true experimentally. This can take a bit of time getting used to if you're proposing one from scratch, but usually you'll just be asked to propose an example rate determining step or complete a half finished reaction mechanism. Okay, a couple of questions then. First question, define the term intermediate. Pause the video and have a go. Pop them up. Hopefully you remember that this is a species that is formed in one step of a reaction and is used up in another step. So this does not appear in the overall reaction or the rate expression. Next question then. This reaction is first order with respect to N2O. Propose a rate determining step for this reaction. Pause the video to have a go. Pop them up. So if the reaction is first order, then we've got rate equals K times N2O. That means there's gonna be one molecule in the rate determining step. So one way to express this could be N2O goes to NO plus N radical, the intermediate, or it could go to N2 plus O. And that looks to be more likely as that at least holds one of the products for the overall reaction. The last thing we have to cover is catalysts and the rate equation. So many reactions are catalyzed and this means that their rate is affected by something that is not in the overall equation. This reaction here is catalyzed by acid as donated by H plus and we can see it's not in the overall equation however it does appear in the rate equation which makes sense because it obviously affects the rate of reaction but doesn't change the overall reaction as it's not used up the definition of a catalyst. And again, this highlights that we cannot determine the rate equation from the stoichiometric equation solely because not everything that is in the rate equation is in the overall equation and not everything in the rate equation is in the rate expression. So we are going to be doing a calorimetry experiment to support this and there are pages in the practical workbook to be completing as well as some worksheets to practice our reaction mechanisms. Thanks again for joining me guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon and as always practice makes slightly better.